Okay, this video is going to be part of a series. Uh, this is the first kind of in the series. Uh, last couple days I've released some uh, example clips that I'm going to be using in this video. And as the time I'm recording this, the newest version of Blender is 2.78a, so that's what I'm running. It might be a little newer by the time you guys watch this. And uh, we're going to work on doing overlays, so putting uh, objects over a video in Blender. And there's a number of ways you can do this. I'm showing you one way. I think it's one of the better ways. So let's go ahead and get started. Just going to go ahead and I'm going to hit with my cursor over to the 3D view. I'm going to hit one on the number pad and I'm going to hit control alt zero on the number pad to bring my camera to the front view. Next again with my cursor still over the 3D view, I'm going to hit N. And actually at this point, I'm going to change the frame rate of my project to 30 frames a second because that's what my video is. And actually uh, that used to be really important in older version of blenders, uh, older versions of blender. Um, but right now, with newer version, lots of times when you import videos in certain areas, it will ask if you wanted to convert the frame rate of your project to the video. But since I'm not doing that part right away, I'm going to set the frame rate to my video frame rate, which is either 29.97 uh, or 30. Uh, I, I forget which one of my camera is. I think it's 30. Uh, but it's such a short clip, that little bit won't matter. Uh, so now that we have that, I'm going to hit N on the nerve pad with my cursor over the 3D view. I'm going to scroll down to where it says background images. I'm going to check that and drop down. I'm going to say add an image. I'm going to say uh, movie clip and open. And I'm going to choose a clip that you probably saw that I uploaded to YouTube the other day. And we're going to, you know, it doesn't show up yet. We're going to hit camera clip, uncheck that. And there is our view. I'm going to move our 3D cube out of the way for right now. And I'm going to find, so the video starts with me clicking the record button uh, and then stepping back. So I want to find right where I first, first start talking, which it looks like right about here between 30 and 40. I'm just going to say 30 frames. So I'm going to hit start and I'm going to change this to 30 frames. Next, I'm going to, or frame 30, I should say, find where I'm done talking, which looks like it's right about here. I smile for a minute. So I'll just set it to 300. So we've set the start and the end because uh, we are clipping off a little bit of the video at the beginning and end there. So that's that part. Now, let's go ahead and grab our cube, bring it back over here and hit F12 to render. And you notice the cube renders, it's kind of black because of where our lighting is. We're going to fix that. And we got a gray background because what we're looking at here right now for the video is just a reference video for while we're editing. It doesn't render out here. We're going to add that in in a moment. But first, let's fix our lighting and our textures here. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is going to hit N to get rid of that sidebar there. And with the cube selected, I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to go to materials and I'm going to change this material to a blue color. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little block down here with my name in it. It's not going to be very pretty. You know, I'm showing you the basics here. Uh, you can design it however you want to look. I'm just showing you how to get this stuff over a video. Uh, so I have that, but when I render out, you can see it's still black. Uh, I can move the lighting, but I'm going to use ambient occlusion. It isn't really that important for what we're doing here necessarily, but I like it. It's easy to do. It slows down your rendering a little bit, but there we go. I have a blue box. Still have our gray background. Let's go ahead and fix that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go up to here and we're going to drop down and go down to uh, the compositor, compositing. And we're going to check use nodes, backdrop, and auto render also. You don't really need to click that. I'm going to grab this stuff and then I'm going to, in the view up here, I'm going to hit shift A and to inputs, I'm going to choose movie clip. And instead of open, I'm going to click this drop down because we've already imported the video we want to use. We're going to click right there and there it is. Scroll out on the wheel to zoom out, center click and drag to move that around. Now we need to mix these two together. Uh, so I'm going to hit shift A again and I'm going to go down to, uh, where are we, um, matting and not matting. What am I looking for? I'm looking for, oh here, convert. Not, no, that's not it. I'm drawing a blank now. Colors, thank you. Alpha over. We're going to drop that on here. And again, I've mentioned this in previous videos uh, where this is one of those things where Blender's kind of weird in my thought process anyway, is that the bottom video, so we want the, our box over top of our video clip. So you would think that the box would go in the top image here and the video would go in the bottom, but it's reversed. The top video goes in the bottom and the bottom video goes in top. So now that we do that, we can hit F12, but it still shows us our gray background because we're telling it to render the sky as a gray background. So over here in our render area, we're going to go down to shading. And over here where it says alpha sky, we're going to change alpha to transparent. And now when we render, instead of rendering our gray sky, it's going to render a transparent 
and put our video in the background. So it's mixing it right here. Problem is, if you look at this video and look at our render, it's clipping the video a bit. And it's because of the sizing right now, our project is set, our video is 1080p. Our project is set to 1080p, but it's set to render at 50%. So it's clipping off 50% of our video. Click that, change it to 100%, hit F12, and you'll see that it renders it out fine. A little slower rendering because it's doubling up, actually quadrupling it up if you think about it, um, what it's rendering. Okay, problem with that is what if we want to render out at different sizes? We want to render a, a lower resolution as a test video. Do we want to change this every time? No, we don't. So going over back over here to our node editor, hitting shift A, we're going to go down to distort and we're going to go down to scale. Drop that in line for our video here and we're going to change this to, let me zoom in so you can see it better, uh, from relative to render size. So now I can hit F12 and you can see it renders fine. And if I set it to 50%, it's gonna render at half the size but doesn't crop anything. So this will adjust our video to always match our render size and the scene up here already does. So that's it for that part. Let's go back up here and go back to our default setup here. So we're back in our 3D view and actually make the way this is gonna look. So I'm gonna scale this down a little bit, uh, up a little bit more, scale it on the X. I'm going to grab that, going to move it over here. I'm going to scale on the Y down a little bit and scale on the X a little bit. So there we go. Now I can hit F12 and I've rendered, I got this blue bar there. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit space bar. I'm going to type text. I'm going to add text. And I'm going to hit RX90 to rotate it up and hit enter. And then tab to edit that. You can change the font. Again, this is just a basic example, so I'm not going to uh, change the font. Uh, but you can do that by going with the text selected, going to the font tab and choosing your font here and just choosing a font file that you have. Uh, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit three on my number pad to go to the side view. And I'm also going to hit F, uh, five on the number pad to get us out of perspective mode so I can line things up better. And I'm going to grab and move our text right here in front of our blue box. And if I hit, uh, zero on the pad, go back to the camera. You can see it there, I can hit F12, and there it is. I am gonna extrude it a little bit, um, just to give it kind of a 3D look. Doesn't need to be for something like this, it's just my name on a box, and I'm gonna line it up in the box here. So now I have my name in a box here, perfect. Uh, but we want some animation, we want this moving around. We don't wanna set keyframes for both these things, because you might have multiple things. Maybe you'll have two boxes here, like maybe you'll have like a blue box, and we'll say, now what I'm gonna do here, here, and go uh, white. Go back to the 3D view here. Grab, go back to our camera view. Grab, you know, maybe you're gonna have a box like that. You can't really see it because a lot of my background's white. You don't wanna have set keyframes for each of these. In fact, I'll leave that there just as an example. I'm gonna choose that. I'm gonna shift select my name, and I'm gonna shift select the blue box here. And I'm gonna say shift P, or sorry, control P, and parent to object. Now, I can move my name independent, I can move this white box independent, uh, but everything follows the blue box. Now, if for some reason you don't want everything following something like the blue box, you can always put an empty in there and parent them to the empty and move the empty around uh, as an option as well. But for this, I'm just going to parent both my name and the white box to the blue box. And now I can set keyframes. I am going to go you know, approximately 30 frames in, so about a second into the video. I'm gonna hit I and hit location. So I set a keyframe for that location. I'm gonna go back to the first frame of our animation. I'm gonna G, X to grab on the X axis and I'm gonna move it off screen. And I'm gonna hit I again and set location. Now if I hit Alt A, whoop, you can see the animation of my name in the boxes coming in. Now I'm gonna go uh, approximately 30 frames from the end of the video. I'm gonna hit I to set the location on that again. G, or sorry, then go to the very last frame, and um, by you can hit shift left and right to go to the first and last frame of, the, of your project. And I'm gonna hit G, X, and move that off on the X axis. Hit I again, it's location. So now I have a video, my name comes in at the beginning while I'm talking, and at the end it will go out again. And again, this one isn't very pretty. Basic box, default text, nothing fancy. But again, I'm just showing you how to overlay animations over your video here. Now, we could go and render this out, but we have one more issue. 
There's no audio to any of this. We're only working with visual stuff right now. We're gonna fix that though. We're gonna click up here again and we're gonna go down to the video editor which actually brings you to the sequ sequencer. And I'm gonna go to uh, add and I'm gonna go to movie and I'm going to choose the movie clip that we've been working with. Make sure that sound is checked and start frame, we're gonna to set to one to make sure it's lined up properly with our project. Hit add that, and you can see it adds it in and it's lined up properly with our project. The video's in there as well. We don't need the video on this, so you can remove it. And again, this is another thing, Blender's a little backwards. Most video editors, the video track is on top and the audio track is on the bottom. It's the other way around this, so I'm gonna select this top track and hit delete. Yes, erase the clip. And um, we should be good. We should have that audio there now. And let me make sure I just did that right. Oh, okay. Usually Blender puts the audio. Oh yeah, I did that. I said it right. I did it wrong. <sighs> okay. Uh, the video is the bottom clip. You delete the bottom clip because we don't need it. If we hit F12, you'll see that it still renders out the video. Now we have our audio there. I'm gonna go back to our default view. And to make sure it renders out properly, let's go to our render tab. Let's set this to 100, so it's rendering at the full 1080p for this video, whatever size your project's gonna be. Right here, I'm gonna change this to a video instead of a PNG, I'm just gonna say XVID. And down here under presets, I'm gonna choose XVID. And since we're exporting audio as well, we're gonna choose an audio codec. Doesn't really, whatever you wanna pick, I'm gonna go ahead and choose MP3, just to save size, save room. And then where we want to output to. So I'll go ahead and click in here, overlay, and I'm gonna say uh, overlay render one dot AVI. If you don't put the dot AVI, it will put it in for you, but also with the, it will say uh, the name that you put 30 underscore 330, because it will name it whatever frames you have in there. At this point, instead of saying render, we're gonna say animate, and it's going to start rendering out that video with the audio and everything. So that's it. Uh, again, there's multiple ways you can do that. Do this. Um, I might show you others in the next couple of days or I might just move on to other stuff because we're gonna start doing similar stuff to this but with motion tracking. Um, but I wanted to get you started with this. I do thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description to the video to my website. If you enjoy my videos, think about becoming a supporter over at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. There's a link to that in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. My name is Chris of filmsbychris.com, and this is a test video for tutorials later this week where I'm going to show you how to do overlays in Blender.